Good day everyone and we are back again and we be busy with we've been busy with um you know the November 2020 paper. Uh so um we are trying to actually work towards those final exams, just making sure that you are prepared and will continue being your plug when it comes to physics and chemistry. Right? Um so if you haven't subscribed, please just be part of the channel. Okay, uh add to the numbers there. And we've been growing uh, quite phenomenally. And um, yeah, for those of you who need assistance with mathematics or physical science, you're more than welcome to, uh, you know, get in touch with us. And our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, so now we are going to look at question six of the November 2020 paper that we've been looking at thus far. And it's going good, I hope. Right, so this is based on the Doppler effect, okay? So let's get into it. So they give us a siren. Uh, they say the siren of a moving train, um, of a train moving at a constant speed along a straight horizontal track emits a sound of constant frequency, okay? So obviously it means that our train in this case is the one that is emitting uh, the sound. That's our, uh, uh, you know, that's our source of sound, right? And then they say a detector placed next to the track records the frequency of the waves, of the sound waves, right? And they say the results obtained are shown um, in the, sorry, in the in the graph below. Okay, so this is the graph that we are uh, referring to. All right, so now having a look at this graph, I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. Okay, so um, having a look at the graph. So if this is an indication of our detected frequency, you'll see that the detected frequency was initially high at 3148, and then it dropped at a point, right? And keep in mind that that detector was actually stationary, okay? So in this case, we know that um, this is where we would be able to apply a Doppler effect, right? So first question, they say, state the Doppler effect in words. Of course, you should be able to state that by now. We we'll say, well, this is the apparent change in the frequency that is detected. Uh, if the source and the listener are moving, you know, relative to the uh, uh, speed of sound propagation, right? So, uh, of course, you, you should be able to state that. I won't write that down. Okay, let's go to the second one. They say, does the detector record the frequency of 3148 hertz when the train moves towards the detector or away from the detector? And of course, I mean where he records a higher frequency, that would obviously indicate that the train was obviously moving towards him, right? Or him or her, whatever. Okay, so in this case, uh, in, it, it was moving towards, right? And then obviously it means at this point here, this is when the train was moving away from him. But uh, to answer the question 6.2, it was moving towards. All right, now let's get to the, uh, the the calculation part. They say calculate the speed of the train. Okay, take the speed of sound in air as 340. Okay, so uh, there are two things that are unknown to us here. We don't know what the frequency uh, that is emitted by the train is, and nor do we know what the frequency of the listener, I mean, of, of uh, um, sorry, the speed of the train as well as the frequency of the train. So let's set up our Doppler effect equation. Okay, in fact, you know what, Let, let's specify. Let's set up an equation when the train was moving towards at this point here. So I'm going to say, well, this is when the train was moving towards us. Okay, so we're going to say, well, FL, that's V plus minus VL over V plus minus VS times the frequency of sound. Now, in this case, I want you to please note, okay, so we are talking about the part or the portion where the train was moving towards, right? So the detected frequency in that regard was 3148, so I'm going to actually say this is 3148 over there okay now we know the value of the, the you know this the speed of sound remember it was given to us as 340 okay and vl which is the velocity or the speed of the listener and remember that the listener was stationary so in this case 
means I'm just going to say 340 at the top. But in this case, remember that I want our frequency of the listener to be a higher value. So it means in this case, this must be an improper fraction. It means that the numerator must be greater than the denominator, right? So in this case, it means that I'm going to say 340. So in order for the denominator to be smaller, it must be minus the speed of the source. But we didn't know what the speed of the train is, right? Multiplied by that frequency of the source there. Right. So what I'm going to do is let's try and, uh, you know, express this uh, somehow as a, uh, you know, as an equation of sorts. Okay, so I'm going to just say 340 times Fs, right? Remember, this is over 1. So I can say 340 times Fs multiplied by 1 if I cross multiply there. So I've got 340 um, Fs, okay, which would be equal to, now note I'm going to have this value here, 3148 Hz into... 340 sorry this is 340 minus vs okay right so of course there are two unknowns there so i'm going to leave this as equation one you can see obviously we're going to have to solve this simultaneously okay now let's talk about the point when the train was moving away all right same thing that we're going to do use the same equation However, we know that the frequency that is detected when it was moving away is 2073, okay? And still, the listener is stationary, the speed of sound is 340, divided by, now I want my frequency of, that the detected frequency to be lower. So it means that in this case, this should be an improper, a proper fraction rather. Uh, obviously, anything multiplied by a proper fraction becomes smaller, isn't it? Okay, so in this case, it's going to be 340. In order for this to be a proper fraction, it means that the denominator must be bigger. Now, if you don't understand what I'm talking about here, uh, obviously, it means that you haven't watched our full video on the Doppler effect. I think it would be wise for you to do so. Okay, uh, we do just check uh, under videos and you should be able to see that, right? So this is 340 plus... Now the velocity of this, uh, the speed of the source, which is our train, um, and multiplied by the frequency of the source, right? Of course, you're given this equation. Um, that's the same equation that you use there, of course. Now what I'm going to do is just express this again as an equation. So this is going to be 340 multiplied by Fs times 1. So this is 340 Fs. And again, I'm going to say this is... Uh, uh, sorry, not 340, rather, 2073, so that's 2073 into, right, multiply those together, this is into 340 plus Vs, okay, so I hope that makes sense, so now we're going to call that equation 2, let me get this out of the way, so let's call that equation 2, okay, so obviously now we're supposed to solve simultaneously, but I want you to please note um, both equation 1 and equation 2 have got the same things on the left hand side. So if 340FS is equal to that and 340FS is equal to that, then we can equate the two equations. So equation 1 is actually equal to equation 2, so I can equate the right hand sides as well. Okay, right. So I can say, well, this is 3148 into 340, sorry, minus Vs is equal to 2073 into 340 plus Vs. Um, I know a lot of people would actually be kicking and screaming around the maths that's involved here, uh, but nonetheless, we, we're going to try and get that uh, as simple as we possibly can, right? Um, what I would tend to do here, um, let's perhaps uh, remove, let's divide by 2073, okay? Uh, but remember what I do on the left, I do on the right, okay? So that gets rid of that. Okay, now I've got this fraction here, 
3148 divided by 2073. Okay, let's try and get that uh, divided by 2073. Of course, if, if you want to work it out in another way, um, you, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay, so I'm going to take that fraction. Uh, it gives me 1.5185. Okay. Um, uh, of course, I know it's never, you know, a good a, a, a good thing to, you know, round it off. But, you know, for the sake of continuity, allow me to do that. I'm going to round it off. You know, that's the value that I got, 1.518. So I'm going to round that off to 1.52, if you don't mind. So I'm going to say 1.52, okay, into 340 uh, minus Vs is equal to, now note on this side, I'm now left with 340. Why do I keep making the same mistake? Uh, 340 plus Vs, okay? Right, just to get this thing out of the way. Um, so I'll continue on to this side. So I'll say 1.52, okay, into 340 multiplied by 340. Um, so times 340. Okay, I get 516. So remember, it's this product over here. Now I'm taking you through this because I want to, uh, to get this well. So that's 516.6, um, I mean 0.31, okay, uh, 0.31, okay. And then I'll say minus 1.52. Vs, okay, so that multiplied to that, mul that multiplied into that, is equal to 340 uh, plus Vs. And of course, uh, let's identify all our like terms here. Uh, sorry for all the mistakes I'm, I keep making here. Right, so I'm going to take Vs to the other side, bring 340 to this side. Now, on the other side, I've got 1.52 Vs positive plus Vs. So that would give us 2.52 Vs, right? And then on this side, I've got 516.31 minus 340, okay? And I get 176.31, okay? So that's what I have onto this side. And we can divide both sides by 2.52. Uh, I'm very deliberate about this one because I know many of you would actually complain, um, you know, on how we got to that answer. So usually I just show you the answer, but obviously I'm taking you through this so that you know how to work it out, okay? Uh, so that's 176.31, and we divide that by 2.52, and I get a value of 69.96 uh, or 69.97, okay? Uh, 69.97 meters per second or you can even round that off I think it would be uh, even um, good to round that off to 70 meters per second oh that's a very fast train um, all right I'm sure you 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 are able to follow on in what I did of course uh, if you wanted to work this out differently uh, perhaps maybe uh, work out, you know, find Fs as the subject of the formula in the one equation and substitute it into this. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I went for something that I thought would be shorter and easier. Okay, you can take any other method you want. Uh, just uh, check if we get to the same answer. All right. And then uh, just the last portion of it. Okay, they say to us uh, the detector started recording the frequency okay, of the moving train siren when the train was 350 meters away, right? Now they say calculate the time T1 uh, indicated on the graph above. Of course, we know, we now know the speed that the train was moving at, okay? And we know that at this point here, this is when the train was passing uh, the detector and obviously this is now moving away so in this case i would simply say well uh, this is going to be to find speed it's always change in distance divided by change in time or you can say speed is distance divided by time uh, or 
yeah um, so I'm going to say well speed is distance okay divided by time okay so that's 6.4 or you can use from equations of motion remember you've got delta x is equals to vi delta t remember it's moving at a constant speed so it would mean that the acceleration is zero okay and once again uh, you can just simply say well look for velocity there uh, you'd get delta x divided by change in time which would be the same thing as distance is i mean velocity or speed rather is distance over time now the speed that we're given is 70 meters per second so we want the distance okay uh no maybe let me just substitute so the speed that we have is 70 meters per second we want to find out the time the distance was given as 350 sorry about that uh, okay 350 and we want to find the time t1 okay so i'm going to say uh okay you could have taken the 69.97 again all right um if you wanted to take that one 69.97 um in fact 350 rather divided by 69.97 right and i get a distance of uh, rather a time of five seconds okay right so uh, either way you would get something close to that uh, and that would be our final answer i hope that's been clear ladies and gents um Again, uh, once again, you would have gotten yourself those full marks there. Uh, it's out of 11 marks. And I'm sure the Doppler effect, you know, it's quite a, a nice section where you can score free marks. Please make sure that you maximize. Uh, for those of you who didn't know how to work out those simultaneous equations, well, guess what? Uh, I'll continue being your plug. Now you know how to work them out. And um, I'm sure you'll do incredible for those exams. Otherwise, ladies and gents, uh, I will see you guys next time. Please don't forget to subscribe and continue, you know, working hard and, uh, you know, just tell your friends and continue to, you know, follow our channel and we'll continue dishing out good content. See you guys next time. Shop, shop.